Now this is the new ASUS ZenBook 3 Deluxe, or the UX490 UA, if we're going to be specific. But it's the new sort of 2018 model, it came out just after Christmas, and it packs in the latest Intel 8th generation processors. So that means this now has quad-core CPU inside rather than dual-core on the older late 2017 model. But does that mean it's worth buying? Is it any good? And the short answer is yes, but it's not perfect, there's a few issues. I'm sure you'll agree, this is a gorgeous looking laptop. In this royal blue color with gold trim, it's really eye-catching, and I think one of the best looking laptops you can buy right now. At just under 13 millimeters thick, and weighing just 1.1 kilograms, that's about 2.4 pounds, it's even thinner and lighter than the new MacBook Pro 13. So the compact size and light weight means this is an ideal travel companion ultrabook. You'll barely feel this in your backpack or your briefcase. Does anyone still use briefcases? I don't know. The downside of this super thin design is there's simply not enough room for anything other than the new USB Type-C ports. So like the new MacBook Pros, you're gonna have to get used to adapt to life if you buy the ZenBook 3 Deluxe. There are a few benefits though. You can use the same charger for your phone if it supports it. The laptop charges really quick. Just 45 minutes will get you about 60% of the charge back. And finally, because two of the ports support Thunderbolt 3, you can output to high-res monitors and even connect up an external graphics card for more serious gaming. I would be lying if I said I hadn't tried to poke and prod the screen thinking it was a touchscreen to begin with. There's something about the glossy screen and I guess the fact that this is a high-end and very expensive laptop that made me think that this should be a touch screen. But it's not, so I'm gonna have to get over it. It is a lovely screen though. Browsing the web, watching YouTube videos or Netflix movies all look great on the ZenBook. And it sounds good too, thanks to the four Harman Kardon speakers. But while the screen isn't professionally color accurate, it's definitely good enough for a bit of photo and video editing. Some people may be a bit annoyed that there's no 4K option here, it is just full HD, but honestly, considering it's just a 14 inch screen size, I think full HD is just right for it, and it means the battery life isn't terrible. Now thanks to the thinner bezel, or what ASUS call the Nano Edge display, you get a 14 inch screen size in a 13.3 inch laptop chassis. The bezels aren't quite as thin as the Dell XPS 13, but it does mean ASUS can fit the webcam in the normal place above the screen. The only downside though is the webcam is pretty terrible. I'm in really good lighting conditions and the quality is just, well, it's average at best, but if I walk to somewhere a little bit darker, say like here, it's terrible. It's one of the worst webcams I've used on a high-end laptop in a long time. If you're gonna be using this for lots of video conferencing, video calls, maybe best to look elsewhere. In terms of specs, the entry-level model costs around 1,200 pounds and comes with an i5 8200U, eight gigs of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. But if you pay around 400 more, you'll get an i7 8550U with double the RAM and double the storage, and that's the one I've got here. And it feels super responsive, really, really fast. And that's thanks in part to the super quick SSD. The i7 model with 16 gigs of RAM comfortably handles full res photo and full HD video editing, although it still struggles a bit with 4K since there's no graphics card and it is using the U or low power version of Intel's eighth gen chips. So performance is actually really impressive for the size, but I wouldn't really recommend gaming on it unless maybe you drop the resolution to 720 and you use low to medium settings. It's not really a gaming machine. Although as I say earlier, thanks to the Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, you could spend several hundred pounds and connect up an external GPU if you wanted, but then you would probably be bottlenecked by the processor. Unlike the Acer Swift 5 I recently reviewed, I never noticed the ZenBook 3 Deluxe getting too loud, and it's near enough silent when doing basic stuff. It does get quite hot though, especially around the top right of the keyboard, so even when just doing some writing in Google Docs, I do notice it gets quite warm. Not uncomfortably so, but noticeably, which is a bit annoying. In terms of battery life, well, it's average at best. ASUS say you'll get nine hours, but that's if you stick to really basic tasks and keep the brightness down to about 150 nits. In the real world, I found it was a fair bit less. An hour of Netflix with 50% brightness dropped the battery by 21%. So really, we're looking at around five and a half hours of use from the ZenBook 3 Deluxe, which is fine, but not great considering it's got the latest, more efficient chips and also it probably will struggle to get you through a full day of work. But the good news though is that it does charge fast, so that mitigates it a little bit, I guess. But the biggest difference for me between the ZenBook 3 and the ZenBook 3 Deluxe, aside from the slightly bigger screen, is the keyboard. The bigger size means you get more travel in the keys, which makes a big difference to the typing experience. 
It's still far from the best out there, but the keys feel good and I've had no problem typing out my script for this review on it. The touchpad is a bit of a mixed bag though, although it is Microsoft Precision certified, so it supports all of Windows 10's built-in gestures and it is reasonably responsive. I found it a bit imprecise and slow to respond to more subtle finger movements, and sometimes clicking down on it would jump the cursor around a little bit. But it's by no means bad and enabling pointer precision in the settings does improve things a bit. Also, you get a fingerprint reader built into the top right of the touchpad, which supports Windows Hello, so you can unlock the laptop with it. So that is the ZenBook 3 Deluxe. I really, really do like this. It's got a lot going for it, but it's not perfect. And starting at around 1200 pounds or around 16 to 1700 for this model, it is very expensive. And there's a few areas that it falls down on, including the webcam, the sort of so-so touchpad, and the average battery life. I suppose the bigger issue is the competition. The Dell XPS 13, which also has an eighth gen chip, can be found for a similar price, if not a bit cheaper. And the Surface Book 213 is a bit more versatile. So it's got strong competition and it's not perfect, but I would still definitely recommend checking out the ZenBook 3 Deluxe if you fancy yourself a ultra thin and light and really good looking travel companion ultrabook laptop thing. I think maybe that's a bit blingy for some people, but I think it looks really nice. So if you want to find out more about this, I will put links in the description below. And don't forget to let me know what you think of this in the comments. Do you like the look of it? Would you buy it? Do let me know. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, more laptop reviews, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. Thanks for watching.